is how you can boost the quality of your video content with another lighting technique. Let's get right into it. You already know I'm big on using lighting setups, external lighting, it's important. Yes, natural light has its place, it has its moments, but you wanna be able to control the lighting, you wanna be able to control the mood, the feel of your scene. So one tip that I can give you guys if you wanna create more of a cinematic look to your content, start shooting on the shadow side. And the shadow side is literally what it sounds like. You're shooting on the side of your subject that has a shadow cast on them, which in my case is the right side. So I have a key light right over here. So it's not directly in front of me. So if you notice, if I was to look straight ahead, the camera is to an angle. I have my key light. I keep knocking this mic. I'm sorry, pause. <laughs> I have the key light off to my side, to my towards my left side. And then now I have the camera shooting on my shadow side. So there's a ton of tutorials on how far, how close, how in front or how away should, you know, should the key light be and things like that. Should you use the fill light? Should you not use the fill light? I'm not gonna get into that one today. There's tons of it. Learn the fundamentals, learn, learn the, the basics and then break the rules. This is just a quick video on how and what it would look like if you wanted to adopt this trick. So shooting on the shadow side and we have a key light on the opposing side. Why does that pretty much work in every movie, TV show? It just makes your subject look better because it's casting shadows and it's giving you depth. A lot of times people have the ring light or whatever light that they have directly in front of them. They usually will have the camera directly in front of them and it's just gonna make your subject look flat. So if you're doing, and this applies to even photography, if you're doing any sort of like beauty shots or things like that, or just, you just wanna make your subject look the best as they can possibly be, you wanna start creating depth, you wanna start creating a, a feel, you wanna start really showing lines as opposed to just having a very flat and soft subject, which is having your key light directly in front. And a lot of times the highlights might be blown out, it just might be overexposed. So there's a lot of fixing that you have to do in post. And then also with the RGB lights at the back, the main purpose for that for me and most people who have some sort of color or something going on in the background, is just really just to add depth. You're just adding depth, you're adding a background, you wanna add a foreground. In my case, since I'm pretty much at the wall, I wanted just to create something that I could just cause or create separation for me and the background. So this is why I have the RGB lights going on here. So if I had, if I turned my camera around and was showcasing more of the office, then I would have a background foreground setup just to create as much depth as possible. So this is really the real reason, of course, you know, and then color contrast, it's just giving your scene a very fun, just a different kind of look, just to separate yourself, you know, put your personality into it, put your creativity into it. But from a technical standpoint, it's also causing uh, the background and the subject to have separation, which is what you want. So. Moving back to shooting on the shadow side, if you wanna just elevate the way your content looks, shoot on the, sh shoot on the sh shadow side, right? Just turn your camera and once again, find your, your sweet spot. Practice on yourself, practice on your subjects. Find where it looks the best for your subject. And also where you're gonna be shooting at and what are the limitations, where are the resources, what are your advantages that you have for the shoot. You may only be working with one light, you may have a key light and then a couple of RGBs. You might have two lights, so you may wanna run a key light and a fill light. There's so many different ways on how you can do it. On this, in this situation, I'm just running a key light, RGB lights, and then I'm using the natural light to kind of fill in the rest of the scene, right? So that's just one way of doing it, but there's a plethora. So, and I'm being a little bit exaggerated with it because I'm experimenting. So I really have my key light to the side of me and really, really exaggerating where I'm putting the camera. So it's really on the shadow side. Just for also for demonstration purposes and just to see how it looks, just to, you know, let's just experiment. But once again, it could be as subtle or it could be as dramatic as you want. So quick video for you guys, more on the way. Let's get it.